Hello colleagues. I am delighted to talk today about historiographical perspectives on activism in sport. By way of introduction and background, my research is in sport history. I identify three phases. In the first phase, I worked in the realm of social history, informed by theory and politics. In the second phase, I turn to historiography, how historians write about and understand the past. In my current phase, I am experimenting with creative fictional history. Turning to today, it must be noted that athletes have long been activists. At the height of the Jim Crow era, African-American boxer Jack Johnson followed reigning heavyweight champion Tommy Burns around the world. Johnson bought ringside seats at Burns' fights and publicly taunted him for refusing to fight a black man. After the First World War, sportswomen in France, including Alice Millay, organised four international competitions and agitated for female inclusion in track and field events at the Olympic Games. In the mid 20th century, Jackie Robinson ended racial discrimination in professional baseball when he signed for the Brooklyn Dodgers. On several occasions, Robinson overly challenged racial segregation. The 1960s witnessed an upsurge in activism, epitomised by the bowed heads and raised black glove fists of Tommy Smith and John Carlos in Mexico City. As part of Me Too, gymnasts in the United States testified against Larry Nassar, the doctor for the national team, who was sentenced for sexual abuse. In 2016, Colin Kaepernick and Eric Reid began kneeling during pre-game renditions of the national anthem. In this presentation, I analyse issues around presenting historical explanations of activism in sport. I begin by positioning activism in sport history and then discussing historiographical issues around facts, social change and historical narratives. In the final section, I discuss what philosophers of history call ethically responsible narratives. Interest in activism among sports historians follows the field's alignment with social history, a genre that upended the modernist notion of dispassionate, detached historians. For, the most, of the, for most of the 20th century, historians studied the past for its own sake and as an activity of the reasoning mind. Critically, they refrained from moral judgment. Modernist historians understand the past through rational investigation of the sources, which are deemed to hold the truth. In contradistinction, social historians see the past as a site of suffering and ethical transgression. They see themselves as part of an emancipatory mission by telling the stories of the disempowered. Yet if social historians of sport have embraced emancipation as an ethical value, they simultaneously remained committed to the empiricism, logic and reason of modern history. And herein lies a paradox. Historians who configure their works to conform to an emancipatory mission cannot argue that their histories arise from an objective mining of the facts. E.P. Thompson, a doyen of social history, undermined the modernist notion of objective historical facts when he described their fluidity. Historical facts, Thompson said, can change their form or attain their form but change their meanings or dissolve into other facts. Thompson's notion of fluid facts appears in many of the questions that surround Smith and Carlos's protest in Mexico City, including their precise objectives, 
the genesis of the form of their statement and the aftermath. For example, with respect to the genesis of, their, of the bowed heads and raised black gloved fists, historians must deal with contradictory accounts. Both Smith and Carlos claim to have formulated the idea. Harry Blutstein emphasises spontaneity, and he believes that the truth is unlikely to ever be known. In 2005, San Jose State University erected a statue of Smith and Carlos. The statue reminds us that the image of the two athletes has changed over time. In 1968, Smith and Carlos were associated with the widespread violence and rioting that occurred in the US in the 1960s. Change is a hallmark of social history, but historians disagree about how to approach social change. Many historians consider social change as simply the accumulation of often small and gradual modifications that bring about a new state of affairs. Theoretically informed historians focus on structural causality and the emergence of new structures about beliefs, values, norms, roles, practices and ways of doing things that differ from the past. However, notions of structure and of understanding the relationship between structure and human action vary widely among historians. How, for example, might historians theorise the IOC's Rule 50 of the Olympic Charter? Until recently, Rule 50 prohibited political statements. Under the current rule, athletes such as Gwen Berry and Noah Lyles can now express political views and make symbolic gestures, such as kneeling or raising a fist. One critical question here is, did Black Lives Matter influence the IOC? At first glance, a link is obvious. The IOC's previous firm stance against, pro against protest or activism put it at odds with rapidly changing attitudes in sport. But glances do not explain the influence of Black Lives Matter on the broader struggle against racism nor do they explain how historians should represent the struggle against racism in the context of a just and equal society. Questions around representations of the struggle against racism draw attention to the nature of historical narratives. Historians of sport increasingly distinguish between the past as a category of real bygone events and people, and history as a narrative representation of the past. In this framework, the form of a narrative, its metaphors, plot and voice, is as important in conveying understanding of the past as the content, the facts, concepts and contexts. Hayden White argued that historical facts by themselves do not establish meaning. He maintained that meaning resides in the narrative. A narrative is more than a compilation of facts. A narrative is a coherent story, free of tensions and contradictions. A narrative also contains a plot that organises the evidence as a genre of story, for example, a romance or a tragedy. A story injects meaning, usually a moral meaning. White insists that all decisions around narrative form and plot are ethical issues. He argues that historians choose their plots on the basis of their ideological perceptions of the present and the future. The idea that historians are authors who make choices about the form of their narratives has led to calls for historians to explicitly explain their narrative choices. In the words of Grant Farad, historians have a responsibility to explain how they create their narratives. As an example, Farad notes that Jackie Robinson 
is widely considered an exemplary integrationist who made black players tolerable to white America. In contradistinction, Farad provides examples of Robinson's acute sense of pride and innate fierceness, which he cites as evidence of his activism and resistance to Jim Crow legislation. Ethics are not always easy to uncover in empirically based modernist history. The moral philosopher Emmanuel Levinas argued that ethics resides first and foremost in the face-to-face -face encounter with the other and the choices around content and form that such encounters impose on narrators. Levinas's work highlights the importance of giving the other a voice. In 2010, Russell Field and Bruce Kidd included three narratives by activists in an edited collection on sport, resistance and social change. African-Canadian sprinter Valerie Jerome, Canadian racewalker Anne Peel, and anti-apartheid activist Tony Sues. Jerome and Sousa's narratives capture critical features of the past by conveying its messiness, which challenge narrative coherence. Jerome illustrates this in her introduction. Usually, when I tell a story about my involvement in Canadian sport, Jerome begins, I focus on the disturbing ways that my family's blackness limited our opportunities and placed us at the margins of Canadian society in the 1950s and 1960s, even as my brother and I were winning medals. Here, I complicate this story by examining some of the peculiar unintended consequences of Canada's intersect intersecting systems of race, class and gender. Of course, the activist's voice, like the historian's narrative, always reveals self-interest in its form. Sports studies, Steve, sports studies scholar Steve Marston offers an example of this in his analysis of LeBron James and Colin Kaepernick's divergent paths towards a progressive future. James, according to Marston, favours faith and advocates for a process in which he will act as a benevolent leader leading others through adversity. Kaepernick downplays his role as a social leader, instead deferring to Malcolm X, who promotes doing whatever is necessary to gain political equality. In conclusion, ethically responsible history is alert to the form of representation, including the narratives of the historian author and the voices of the sources. With regard to sports activism, ethically responsible historians should make explicit, firstly, their evaluations of the voices of the past and their desires for the future, and secondly, their assessments from the vantage point of the present of whether there is progress toward an equitable and socially just future. Thank you.